Okay, this is the video presentation for the junior portion of the senior final. So juniors, seniors are all gone. We have covered one more section in trigonometry, which is our half angle and double angle formulas. And we're going to apply those and then solve some trigonometric equations. This is going to be really cool. So let's take a look at this first problem here. It was number 10. Suppose angle A is acute. So as soon as I see that, I am going to draw a quadrant one right triangle to represent an acute angle A. And this is not the scale, but I will just label everything. And then they tell me cosine of A is four over five. Well, you all know your trig ratios, all right? We're gonna use SOHCAHTOA and we think cosine would be adjacent to hypotenuse. And you see that right here. Cosine is adjacent to hypotenuse. So that means the side adjacent to angle A would be 4 right here. And then the hypotenuse of this quadrant 1 right triangle representing angle A would be the 5. And now the other leg of this right triangle, again this is not to scale, but isn't this a Pythagorean triple and wouldn't this leg have to be a 3? the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. And if you don't remember your Pythagorean triples, you just get that leg with Pythagorean theorem. All right, anyway, with this diagram, I can answer anything, especially really cool things like, what is cosine of 2a? Think about what we have learned. If I give you cosine of a equals 4 over 5, you should be able to give me the exact answer for cosine of 2 times a. A double angle formula right there. So let's go with our double angle formulas. Cosine of 2 alpha, and here they all are. Sine of 2 alpha is 2 sine of alpha cosine of alpha. And then for cosine of 2 alpha, we have three different identities. Cos squared of alpha minus sine squared of alpha. And then 1 minus 2 sine squared of alpha. And then finally, um, cosine of 2 alpha equals 2 cos squared of alpha minus 1. I don't know why I put the cosine of 2 alpha there one more time, but that's okay. All right, now, which one do you want to use? They would all work, especially with this diagram right here. But let me give you a little advice. What was given? Cosine of angle A is 4 over 5. So why don't we write or use the cosine of 2 alpha that is in terms of only cosine? So it would be this 2 cos squared of alpha minus 1. There you go. And now it's just direct substitution and arithmetic. So that's going to equal 2. And what's cos squared of alpha? Well, Cosine of angle A is 4 over 5. If I square that, I'm going to get 16 over 25. All right, and then minus 1. And now the arithmetic. So, um, looks like I would have a common denominator here of 25. And do you guys all see 2 times 16 is 32 minus, and this is a 25 over 25, so my numerator would be 32 minus 25 or positive 7. So cosine of 2 times angle A is going to be 7 25ths. Pretty cool. All right. Oh, same situation. And same diagram. Cosine of angle A is still 4, four over 5. And now they are asking us to find sine of 2 times angle A. So let's do our identity for sine of 2 alpha. And this one's the easy one because there is only one identity right there. And that would be 2 sine of alpha cosine of alpha. So, again, with this one, we're going to have to use our diagram because they only gave us cosine of angle A. So that's all right. We have 2. And then what is sine of angle A? Sine of alpha right here. Sine of this angle A. Well, again, our trig ratio is so Katoa. Sine is opposite to hypotenuse. So that's going to be a 3 over 5. And then cosine of alpha becomes cosine of angle A, which is 4 over 5. You see it in the given and also in your diagram because cosine is adjacent to hypotenuse. So there you go. And now the arithmetic. Well, this one, 2 times 3 times 4, that's 24 over 5 times 5, 25. So cosine, or excuse me, sine of 2 times angle A is exactly 24 25ths. 
These are cool identities right here. And we are getting the ability to find so many more exact answer to trigonometric expressions. Really cool. All right. Now, <laughs> number 12, simplify. Well, you all, if you saw this a week ago, you would have done this. All right. But really, this is so simple because don't we have a double angle identity for both sine and cosine? So I would start off by applying my identities. All right. So how do you guys want to write sine of 2x? Well, sine of 2 alpha is 2 sine of alpha cosine of alpha. So sine of 2x, I'm going to write as 2 sine of x cosine of x. There you go. OK, now we've got our 1 minus. And then what are we going to use for cosine of 2x? Now, let me give you some very, very good advice. Yes, we could use any of these three identities for cosine of 2 alpha right here. But you've got to think, what do we have in this expression already? And do you see this 1 I have outside of the parentheses? 1 minus. So I would want to use the identity for cosine of 2x right here that has a positive 1 in it so the 1's would cancel. So it looks like my favorite. I'm going to say cosine of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. And again, I hope you see why I wanted to do that. Watch what happens now when we simplify. All right, so we have 2 sine of x cosine of x. And the reason I use this identity is I have now 1 minus 1 is gone. And then I distribute this minus to the negative to get a positive 2 sine squared of x. And now I just cancel common factors. So. The twos cancel. The factor of sine up top cancels with one of the factors of sine in my denominator. And I am left with cosine of x over sine of x. All right. And I hope you remember your reciprocal identities. All right. All this stuff right here. All right. Cosine over sine. Isn't that cotangent? Well, let's look over here. Cotangent of theta is cosine of theta over sine of theta. So that tells me cosine of x over sine of x would be cotangent of x. And there you have it. So simple. All right. One more. One more. And this is it, you guys. Oh, now look at this one. Oh, my. <laughs> Again, we got to go a little farther back now because 1 plus tangent squared of y I wouldn't be using any reciprocal relationships right there. But go back to what are my favorite relationships, and those are the Pythagorean relationships. Because isn't 1 plus tangent squared of y going to give me a secant squared of y? Well, look right here. 1 plus tangent squared of theta equals secant squared of theta. So we're going to write 1 plus tangent squared of y as secant squared of y. And then I need to use one of my double angle identities for cosine. And there are three of them. Which one would you use? And I look, I've got a minus one. So I want to use the identity for cosine of 2 alpha that has a positive one in it. So I'm going to use my 1 minus 2 sine squared of alpha again. So I have 1 minus 2 sine squared of y minus that one. And I hope you see why I did that. The 1 minus 1 cancels. And what do I have left? I have my secant squared of y. And let's bring this negative out front. I could have brought the negative 2 out front, too, if I wanted. And then I have what left? I have the 2 sine squared of y. All right, so let's clean this up. Well, let's think about this a second. All right. Um, the 2 sine squared of y, I think I would leave up top. I like that. But is there anything I can do with the secant squared of y? Now, let's remember our reciprocal relationships here. All right. Isn't secant 1 over cosine? Secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta. So that means secant squared of y would be 1 over cos squared of y. So I'm just going to put a cos squared of y in my divisor right there. Oh, look at this now. Equals. And now I have my negative 2. And then how are you going to write sine squared of y over cos squared of y? 
Well, isn't sine of y over cosine of y going to give me a tangent of y? So if I squared both of those, that's nothing more than a tangent squared of y. Now let's double check that. Tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta. So sine squared of y over cos squared of y, we're going to write as tangent squared of y. And there's our last problem right there. All right. All right. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And uh, let's have a lot of fun. Juniors, you're almost done. Okay. Get a hold of me if you have any questions. Thank you and have a great day.